Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's uh, Code Inverness live session. Um, with me, Robert Fraser. Uh, I'm also joined uh, by Julie and Daryl. Uh, Daryl is kind of doing everything in the background. He's making sure that the hamsters are well fed so that they can keep the electricity running while we broadcast and he does all the technical stuff. So I'm also going to blame him if we get any technical issues, but without him, uh, it simply wouldn't work. So we've got Daryl there. And uh, well, welcome back to the second week. I'm really glad that you guys came. Um, I, I hope that we've got some people here that were here last week. Don't worry if you've not been in the session before. I'm going to do a bit of a recap in terms of what we've done already. So you'll, I'm sure you'll be able to catch up if you've not done last week's session. Uh, and if you've done last week's session, you come back. Well, that's awesome. Uh, hopefully you shared your stuff in the Code in Vanessa studio and I'll have a chance at some point to look over that with you. What I'm going to do now is last week I mentioned Julie and this week I'm going to go to Julie. Julie, are you there? Hi, Rob. Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Yes. Lovely to hear hello, from everyone. you. Good, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah hi everyone. Clear. Great that you've all come back. Um, yeah, hopefully you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, you can see that. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, I wanted to come to you, um, Julie, because one of the things I was really interested in talking about just before we got started on today's lesson is uh, this moon hack. I can see you've got, you've already been on the website looking at their projects, have you? Yep, so um, this is a website moonhack.com. So just to tell you a little, about, a little bit about this. So Moonhack is a free um, international event uh, that brings together kids from all over the world for a week of coding. So, and it's this week, so it started on Monday and it's hosted by Code Club Australia. Um, but it's open to everyone, all code clubs around the world, individuals, um, households, anyone can take part. Um, yes. It's a record setting event. So if you want to be part of the count, um, then all you have to do this year is just register. So go to moonhack.com and click the register now button. It takes about two minutes uh, to register and you'll be part of the, the count. So if I click on here, um, so the projects, so they supply um, some projects that you can have a go at, or you can create your own. So this year, the theme is um, saving the planet, sustainability, um, environmental, um, things like that. So. Um, you can have a go at one of their own projects. Um, I've done this with my kids the last couple of years and the projects are brilliant. They're really, really fun to use. So I really recommend having a go at them. So you've got Scratch Junior, Scratch, you've got the Python, Microbit. So you can have a go at one or all of them. Um, just, just whatever yeah. um, you want to do. So yeah, that I think was awesome. I actually... Present, I think, actually Sorry, I was going to say, I actually did a couple of these over the weekend, and by doing today's yeah. lesson, you'll certainly, if you've never done anything before, you'll be able to do the Scratch um, kind of projects on this website. Uh, the other ones, like the Python, the Microbit, you probably need to have a little bit of experience in those yeah. kind of languages to do them. That's true, yep. Yeah. So, um, so today, I think 30,000 kids from across the world have registered already for this. Um, so it's an absolutely awesome event. So I really encourage encourage you to get involved. Um, so just register and be part of the count. Um, let's help uh, break world record. Um, and next week I'll be able to give you a grand total of how many kids across the world took part in this. Uh, you can follow Code Club Australia on Twitter and Facebook just to find out you know what's happening uh, throughout the week. And it's a run event to to follow and get involved in. So back to you, Rob. That's great. Well, thank you very much for that, uh, Julie. It's great for you to tell us about that event, but it's also great to hear from you. And Julie's going to be keeping an eye uh, through today's session. If I do anything wrong, she's going to tell me. 
Um, if you guys have any comments or feedback, uh, you just post that on the, the YouTube channel. Uh, Daryl will process it in his dungeon and then he will send it to Julie and then Julie will uh, come in and then tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong. Uh, I would, you know, that Moonhack uh, project looks really great. It's great to just even play um, the games and things like that. But I'm going to switch over now uh, to my screen. So, okay. so just bear with well, me one second. Uh, brilliant. Uh, so we can do that. And hopefully you can see this appearing. Uh, we've already done the Who Are are we we've talked a little bit about moon hack and now i'm going to talk to you guys about what we did last time so this is great if you were here last time doesn't mean that you get to turn off you still have to listen to me uh, but for those of you who are new you'll get an idea of what we were we, we were doing so the first thing that we learned about was the interface and some of the words and things like that that i use um when i'm doing my kind of talk and then do process in this uh um, in these lessons, it's really important that we're speaking the same language. And you'll find that in anything that you do with coding, it's all about language. It's all about the words that you use. So I, you hear it talked a lot about being jargon. Jargon, but it's really that we use the same terms when we're talking about things. So I kind of gave you a, a brief view of the interface and I'll try and go over those things when I mention them. Let's say something like the block palette. Um, and then I'm hoping that you guys uh, know what I'm talking about. And the block palette, of course, would be this on the left, this middle area is the code area, and over here is the stage, and then all the other bits. Uh, you'll see me talk about it, and then I'll use it. We also learned about ordering our code and how important it is to have things in the right order. We did events and broadcasting, but it was really, it kind of, I wouldn't say it became confusing, but it was really important that you kept the track of where things were and the process that they were they, they were going through. We created a small animation last week, and it was really based on that kind of conversation between my two favorite characters, Terry and Jerry, and we'll see more about them uh, this week as well. And I also, as I mentioned, broadcasting and events was really the, the most important thing um, that we did last week. It was all about creating a, an event broadcasting that out to our animation and then other characters using that uh, broadcast to create a whole new event and then we were creating uh, sequences so in this example here you can see when jerry receives the hello broadcast he's going to say hello i like your hair and he's going to broadcast i like your hair and then when he receives laugh this is him doing the laugh so it's all about those creating events creating those stages and that's if you can get your head around that, and I know it's a lot to get your head around, but these are fundamental to any programming language, whether you kind of move on, do something more complicated, or carry on and scratch, ordering your code, creating events, and hooking on to those events, absolutely essential. And costumes, just last but last, new, last but not least, costumes. And um, these are Jerry's costumes. We learned a little bit about them, how to change them. Uh, and how to edit them as well. And it was awesome to see the, the, um, the submissions from you guys, the audience, and to see the, the costumes that, that you guys used as well. Okay, uh, Julie, if you're okay, I think, I think we're ready to kind of start today's lesson. Are you, are you keen to know what the theme of this week's lesson is gonna be? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm keep. I'll keep a yeah. Well, on the yeah. comments, and I'll be everyone's voice. So yeah, yeah. Keep commenting. Yeah, thank you. So this uh, this week's theme is movement and position. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard the phrase uh, "You can't know where you're going until you know where you've been." Well, I'm going to leave your religious and uh, ethical teachers to to pick you up on that philosophical point. But on a purely practical point, you cannot work out where you're going in a, in a two-dimensional world if you don't know where you are. So we're going to talk about your position, figuring out what your position is in this scratch world, and then how we move around it. And I noticed last week in some of the stuff that you guys have already done a bit about movement, but it's really important. Again, what I'm going to be going over is the fundamentals here. So you can always learn something. You can always build on your knowledge. First thing I want to do is show you the scratch screen. So this is the stage area, but what I've done here is I've put a grid on top of it. 
And these grid lines, the blue line down the middle is your Y coordinates and the X line that goes, well, it also goes in the middle, but it's uh, on the horizontal axis. Uh, that orange line, uh, X, uh, is your position uh, in the horizontal world. I'm thinking, Julie, I don't really know a, a good way to um, describe the, with the Y and the X other than horizontal and vertical. Uh, maybe your up and down yeah. line is Y and your side to side line is X. Is, is, is that fair enough? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I always used to get them mixed up when I was at school, so it's good to go over it. So, yeah, and I mean, I, I do this. Um, I I do a bit on through. That's it's a really good point you mentioned. I'm, I'm maybe going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, but um, I do a lot in. Uh, I say a lot. But, uh, a significant amount of what I do coding these days is in 3D, which. I'm going to blow everyone's mind to mention there's another third dimension, the Z axis, but we're not going to talk about that this week. And I hold up my left hand and you guys can do this at home. If you're looking at the screen, hold out your left hand uh, right in front of you and make an L shaped with your thumb and your index finger. And that is your Y is your index finger pointing up and your X uh, is your thumb pointing across and then if you're if you're really good uh, try pointing your middle finger away from yourself uh, i'd love to see this if you guys want to take a picture of yourself doing this uh, <laughs> you might get it. some things on the twitter that don't look too too great but if you guys are managing to follow along i'd love to to see this but if you point your middle finger away from yourself that actually gives you the z axis so it's a little bit like uh, have you ever seen that live long and prosper uh, i don't know if you guys can see that in my little uh, you know, so your live long and prosper is this, your Spock sign, uh, but your X, Y, and Z are this, uh, you know, X on your thumb, Y on your uh, forefinger, index finger, and your middle finger point forward. That's one way to remember. So, but I digress. That's just a little bit of fun. But you're absolutely right, mm -hmm. uh, Julie. Sometimes it's hard to remember. It's like anything else. It takes time. It takes a little mm -hmm. bit of practice. But it doesn't matter what screen that you're working on. I'm using the scratch screen here as an example. Every single screen that you have to design on, so whether you go on to design things for business applications or apps for mo mobile phones, you'll all have seen, you'll all be very familiar with screens. They have different sizes, they have different coordinates. Uh, in scratch, we go 240, uh, we're, I'm going to call them pixels, not technically pixels, but we won't worry about that. But we go 240 pixels to the right and 240 pixels uh, to the left. When we go left off the zero, we actually go into negative numbers. And that can be really confusing. We talk about already talked about up, down, uh, Z axis. I'm going to confuse it even more by saying you can actually go in a negative direction as well as a positive direction. So this top right hand corner here would be like your positive X or positive Y, top left X, positive Y. Down the bottom left is negative Y, negative X, and, and bottom right is um, positive X, negative Y. But I'm going to use some examples and hopefully we're going to get our mind around this together today. So if you're ever wondering what your position is of your sprite character uh, within your game, Scratch is really helpful. You'll see this uh, here above the, the sprite panel and um, just on, on the top right hand corner, it actually tells you what the X and the Y is. So you can move, if you've got your computers open in front of you, you can do this now. If you look at that while you move your sprite character around the stage, uh, those X and Y coordinates will update. And there, I'm just using that uh, screenshot just over the top so you can see how that translates uh, X and Y coordinates onto the, the stage area. Now, if you know anything about me, which you guys don't, thankfully, um, I love a good treasure hunt. Um, and I used to do this for my son when he was younger. Every year at Easter, I would make up a treasure map and it would have different points of interest and different things on it. And I would, you know, you'd obviously have to, to follow along in order to find the prize. Now, Julie, I'm going to use you as a bit of an example. Julie doesn't know this, by the way, guys. I'm just kind of pulling on Julie whenever I think is appropriate. Um, so Julie's, Julie's just having to react to, to what I'm doing to her today. So, so apologies for that. Um, but if I was to ask you, or maybe it'd be better, if I was to describe to you how to get to the treasure in this map, just looking at this map alone, 
Um, I might say to you, Julie, um, if you take your boat past the sharks down to the coconut tree, you'll find a path. And then if you follow that path along in between two lakes, you'll go round, you'll maybe <laughs> see some rocks on your left hand side. If you uh, yep. see the mountains head in that direction, your barrels should be across the river and eventually you get the treasure. How confident would you be in finding the treasure on my treasure map? Um, well, I'd have to get past the sharks first. It might be yes. a bit tricky. <laughs> um, so if I survive that, yeah. Um, yeah, it's finding yeah, that you, path where that yeah. starts. Yeah, that might be a bit tricky. Yeah, so um, you, you, you feel confident enough, but you certainly wouldn't feel, you wouldn't feel really confident. You'd be like, oh, I'm going to get this treasure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make things a little bit easier for you, okay? I'm going to give you this grid. And if I give you the map and I told you that the treasure was in G2, you know, right. that might be a little bit more useful, might it? Yes, definitely. Yeah, that would help. Yeah, so this is getting our idea around coordinates. So the position G2 is the um, is the treasure. I might say, actually, those sharks that you mentioned, uh, what position in our map would you find the sharks? So that would be yeah, <clears throat> C4. C4, uh, you know, explosive yeah. darts, you know, they're James Bond type darts, so it's in, at C4. Um, but, but this allows us to communicate in a really efficient way. I'm not, you know, I could describe to you, oh, it's between the, the active volcano and the rocks, you'll find the sharks. But actually looking at a map and saying C4, it's a really quick way to position ourselves in the world. And, and this is a really simplified example of what you see um, anytime you use like GPS or whatever. What could get quite confusing there is we've kind of done um, interchangeable C4 or 4C. They're, they're totally interchangeable at the moment. It doesn't really matter. I could say uh, 3E and you know, you're know you in the forest or I could say uh, maybe a better example F1 or, or 1F uh, and they're interchangeable. It doesn't matter. It goes to the same point. But what we have to worry about is when, we, when we're just using numbers and when we're using pixels we are only using numbers, we don't have letters. So we have to be really careful in the way that we describe our coordinates. And that's the point I'm trying to get across here, um, is that your X uh, axis, your your left to right axis, your, your um, horizontal axis, if you think horizontal, you think horizon in the distance, or you can keep using the, the cool uh, one hand technique, your horizontal axis, uh, tends to come first or your x-axis. So uh, for the sharks, I would go in this example, they're kind of three, three and three, four. Um, don't worry about that too much just now. You probably do more in your mass class around coordinates and positions, but it's just really trying to reinforce that point about the x and y and um, being careful in terms of how, how we use uh, that language. So I'm almost done talking to you I think I'm going to keep talking to you um, but we're actually going to get to some um, some coding which I know everyone's tuned in to do and we're already 20 minutes in and we've done no coding and you guys must be desperate to get started in coding okay there's kind of one rule in my virtual classroom I have one rule in my real classroom which is be cool and um, which can mean pretty much whatever I want it to mean but in my virtual classroom, I have one rule that I've broken down into three steps, which is show, try, and then ask. So I'm going to, step one, I'm going to show you guys what to do. Step two, I'm going to put, uh, so in, in the show one, I need you guys to play, pay attention to me. Otherwise, show doesn't work if, you, if you're not uh, watching me. In step two, I'm, I want you guys to try and give it a go. But I'm going to put up a slide that reminds you of what you need to do. And then step three, once you've tried it, ask or feedback, uh, send us uh, some messages to let us know how you're getting on. Okay, I just gave you a sneak peek on the first task, but uh, I'm gonna actually switch over to doing some coding. Uh, that's worked, I think. Uh, boom, I'm straight into my uh, Scratch browser. So guys, um, Hopefully you've got a device in front of you that's on your Scratch browser. You need to, if you want to save and share your um, Scratch animations, your Scratch games, you need to sign in. You can see here I'm signed in uh, Code Club Inverness. We talked about this last week. 
We are all based around in the, in the highlands of Inverness, but you guys can be anywhere in the world. Uh, the further away from me at the moment, certainly with COVID-19, the better. Um, so I'm keeping my own social distance, by the way, guys. I'm not going near anyone. Um, but uh, so in the top right hand corner, you just got to make sure that you're signed in if you want to save and share your an animations and, and your games with us. So make sure you're ready. I'm going to show you now. Step one, remember, I'm showing you. You guys are going to watch. And if you've managed to make it this far by listening to me, congratulations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sprite character. And no offense to Scratch Cat, um, but he's not my favorite. I've probably just seen this guy too. <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to give him a hard time, Julie, but I've just seen this guy too much. I need to get rid of him, okay? Um, over the years, you know, he's, he's a lovely guy. He's taught me a lot, um, but I think it's better if he just uh, stays away and we, 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 we go for something else. And anyone who knows me, uh, and you've already figured that out, I love the dinosaurs. And Jerry is my favorite dinosaur. So um, he's going to be my sprite for today. And I'm also, I'm going to choose an item. Okay, so last week we had kind of two sprites that were kind of similar size speaking to each other. This week, I want, I want you guys to pick a second sprite, but I want you to pick something, um, something that's going to be an item. So it's going to be smaller. It doesn't have to be necessarily smaller by default. We can make it smaller, but it's something that's uh, either going to, your character is either going to chase or um, something that your character is going to have to kind of fight with without kind of giving you too much away. So things like bread or, or, or balls, balloons would be good. I'm just having a flick through here. I can't actually decide what I want to. The rooster looks pretty cool. So Jerry's going to go for the rooster, okay? But the rooster's about the same size. I want to make this, like I say, I don't want to make a giant rooster um, dinosaur battle. Uh, I'm going to make uh, the rooster uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, ten's far too small. <laughs> Let's go for uh, 40. That looks about right. One big spray and one little spray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, 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 do control. And I'm going to switch back over my screen. And that is it. That is the first step. I've spoken to you guys enough. I want you guys to take your turn, try, create a new project, a sprite character, and a sprite item. And I told Daryl under no circumstances to play um, elevator music. Well, myself and Julie, while you're doing that, are probably going to have a check in. Uh, on the comments and things like that. Or Julie, um, while leads are working incredibly hard, looking at and list everything that we're saying in great detail, uh, are you getting any, any, any feedback out there? Uh, we're just getting quite a few hellos from folks. So uh, yeah, Fraser and Nairn uh, from Rosebank School, he said hello. Um, Rachel, from Corder, Thomas from Corder. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so if you want to put some more comments um, and I'll give you a shout out. So, but um, there may be- uh, Great, I mean, I think we're still got our but maybe not commenting. Glasgow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to say hello to Jordan Hill Primary School. If you guys are working away today, and um, it's cool. You guys were here last week. I got some uh, good feedback from your teacher. You're all working incredibly hard. <laughs> and yeah, that's really about to... enough time. It's hard how, yeah. We don't want to give people too long to think about it though, do we, Julie? No, that's that's probably long enough. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay, great. So let's um, have a look here. So I am going to move <laughs> on to the next stage. So <laughs> if it seems like I don't know what I'm doing, it's probably because I don't. Um, uh, I'm, I'm figuring out as we go away. The way I like, like to look at it is we're learning together, okay? Um, so I'm wanting to move the item randomly around the screen. 
I'm sorry, one of the things is I'm being distracted. This is the thing about working from home, guys. I'm really sorry about this. But my cat just wanted to come and say hello. So he's bothering me today. So I'm just going to put him over there and say, um, go back to what I'm doing here, right? So don't be distracted. This is, this is me being distracted. I don't want you guys to be distracted. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some more code. And again, I want you to, guys to watch while I do this. It's really important that you watch while, I, while I'm doing the, the code thing, even if I'm being a little bit silly. So I'm going to select my Sprite Rooster and I'm going to move them randomly around the game. And the event I'm going to use to, to kind of trigger this movement, uh, last week we did uh, clicking on the sprites, which kind of made sense for conversation. But most of the time and most of the games and animations that you make, it's going to be when the uh, green flag is clicked. That's really the most common event to start the game. So we're going to use that event when the green flag is clicked and um, we're going to move our character. So at the moment we can see he, uh, the rooster, I'm, I'm saying it's he, I'm going to call it Rob the rooster, uh, why not? Um, he's at X80 and Y49. Uh, and I'm going to go to my motion uh, code blocks and look, what could I use to, to move him around? So one of the things, I'm going to show you maybe the complicated way to do it. And then I'm going to show you maybe the easier scratch way to do it. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is really to show you guys that there's always more than one way to do things. And not in programming, the great thing is there's no right or wrong way to do things. You can do things better, you know, and as you guys get more experience, you'll learn to do things in a different way that's more efficient. But there's always loads of different ways to do the same thing. Um, so I could go here and so when it's clicked then I could actually, I'll manually put in the position. So I'll say minus 180, uh, Y 100. Oh. Uh, and where is he gonna end up? I think, Julie, uh, I think you should end up somewhere about here, just above um, Jerry's head. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, it was a bit yeah. off, but in that general area. Now that would be, I mean, we can't we can't um, just keep reprogramming it every time though. That's not very much fun, is it? To decide uh, where we're gonna put the rooster and then um, manually code in. We could use variables, which I'm gonna talk about today. Um, you could use variables uh, that you can update randomly, uh, but actually, I, I, no surprise here, but uh, basically, Scratch have already got something for us in the code block. It's go to random position. And it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit of a cheat, to be honest with you, because underneath this block, there's a lot of different code going on. So it's, it's actually updating this X and Y coordinate for us and inputting a random number uh, based between those coordinates that we have. So it's going minus... Um, 240 to 240 on the X and then uh, minus 180 to 180 on the Y. And each time it's updating those variables and changing it for us. And it's doing the exact same thing here. Um, but rather than just kind of, cause this at the moment, this, this, this block here looks like he's teleporting all over the places. So either that, or it's like a super fast rooster that, you know, or a, a rooster with a teleportation device. Uh, we actually have another block here, um, which, is, which is really clever, which is glide. And then the amount of seconds to random position. If I click on that one, you'll see his movement becomes more I wouldn't call it realistic, but it's, it, it's certainly more um, natural is maybe the word, Julie. Mm. Yeah. Good, yeah, a little so, smoother. Yeah, yeah a bit smoother. Um, it, yeah. it doesn't look like he's particularly walking because his legs aren't moving, but at least you can see how he moves around the screen. So I quite like this block. I'm going to put this block uh, in. I'm going to choose that one. Uh, it's nice and simple. It does everything that I wanted to do. Um, but again, it's kind of combining different blocks into one big block, which you'll see quite a lot in, in, in Scratch. So if I press my green flag now, he moves around. That's brilliant. But I would He's put a teaser. Teasing the dinosaur. 
He's teasing the dinosaur, and Jerry doesn't like it. Let's be honest, Jerry's not a happy dinosaur about this. But um, one thing is, you don't really want your player to be pressing the green flag constantly to move your character around. What we're going to do here, this is a slightly new concept. I hopefully you guys are, are, are kind of staying with me here, is that we're actually going to use a loop. So in these orange control uh, code block areas, we have different loops here that we can use. The loop that I'm interested in is this forever loop. Okay, so we'll we'll do more about loops as we go forward. I don't want you guys to worry about this too much at the moment. But effectively, all it means is that as long as the game is running, we are going to glide every one second to a random position. So let's let's see how that works. Now you can see, yeah, he's definitely teasing them now, you know, mocking <laughs> them. But but the great thing for us is we're not having to move him around the screen now. He's moving around on on his own. It, on his own rooster, um, it, it, it's rooster agenda, if you will. <laughs> so that's my, that's you can see the numbers. <laughs> yes, you, well, you can see the numbers changing if you're if you're interested. Um, you can see how his position changes. But we also want to we want Jerry to fight back, don't we, Julie? We can't have this. Right. We can't have or Jerry. Research, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to program some movement for Jerry as well. So there's quite a lot here that you guys are going to have to do in this stage. We're going to program our rooster. I don't want you guys to start programming yet. Just watch me just now. Um, I also want you, as well as programming the rooster, I want you to give Jerry the ability uh, to move around as well. And the way that we're going to move Jerry is based on key presses. So Jerry's going to be our um, our player. So we're going to actually move him on, on, on key presses. Again, there's different ways that you do this. I'm picking a fairly, it's a little bit of a cheat way. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see the, the words a little bit better. Um, I think it's, it's not the best way to code it, but I think it, it's going to get us what we need uh, just now. I'm going to create these events. So I'm in the events, the yellow events uh, code block, and I'm going to drag in for when he pressed events. Okay. And the reason I'm dragging in for, as you guys can probably tell, is that I'm going to do different things based on the direction that the key is pressed. And I'm going to go with the up arrow, the down arrow, the left arrow, and the right arrow. Okay. And for each of these, I want Jerry to move. Now, this is this is quite interesting. Um, there's lots of different things that we can do to move Jerry. One of the best movement blocks is this move 10 steps. I think this is probably one that if you've used Scratch before, you've definitely uh, used this because it moves them just a nice kind of space along the screen. Am I gonna do move 10 steps on the up arrow, Julie? Yep. If you no, yeah, I don't think I will actually. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna take the move ten steps. I'm just gonna put it on the right arrow. See, this is thing, right. Julie. I'm not told Julie what I'm gonna do. I'm, just, I, I, so, <laughs> I'm sorry, Julie. Yeah. Um, this, this is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can try that. Yeah. And. Um, so, and then I'm going to duplicate my move 10 steps and I'm going to put it on the left arrow. But that, that, that's not going to work, is it, Julian? So, um, our ten, move 10 blocks when I press the right key, sorry, but that works really well. That's, yeah. That works out, yeah. When I press the right key, moves 10 steps, that's brilliant. But if I do this, left arrow, I'm going to press the left arrow, he's still he's keep moving off the screen. That's not right, is it? <laughs> I need to drag him back in. Yeah, so, so any, any ideas, any ideas, Julie, really, what do you think would be a good way to, <laughs> on the left arrow? I mean, if you guys know the answer mm -hmm. at home or in class, feel free to shout at your teachers. You have my permission to shout at them. Uh, what do you think the right answer here is? Uh, mm -hmm. What should we do to this move 10 steps so that he moves in the right direction when we press the left arrow? Um, can you make it negative 11? I'm not sure. Ne negative 10. Negative. Negative ten. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Hopefully, you guys um, on the on the channel um, have the same idea. It's let's move them in the negative direction. Negative directions, I find very confusing. Negative vectors, negative numbers. 
Um, they're not natural, are they? We're used to talking about things, not negative things. Uh, but once you become a student and have a overdraft, then you'll probably get more used to having uh, negative numbers in your in your life. Um, see here, start the game, and now I can move based on the left arrow and the right arrow. It absolutely works. Fine. Now, for the up and down keys, though, I'm not going to use the, the steps because the steps in this is, is really, um, it's a replacement for that X coordinate. Steps are, are forward and backward. We can't really uh, manipulate steps to go up and down. So what we need to use is this change Y by 10. So we change the Y by 10 when we press the up arrow and you guessed it, we're going to change the Y by negative 10 when we press the down arrow and what that'll do is now we'll be able to chase around a rooster yeah based on key presses jerry now has a way to fight back and what i'm going to do i'm going to switch back over and i'm going to pass it over to you guys and um, this is your chance there was quite a few um things in there for you to do so i'm going to give you a little bit longer maybe you've already started but you need to move your item sprite randomly around the screen and you need to move your character around based on key presses. If you know a better way of doing key presses, if the way I've done it you think can be improved, then you are perfectly entitled um, to improve upon my code. Okay, is there anything coming through on the on the chat? Is, are, are people just totally tuned out, do you think, Julie? Do you think they've had enough of me? That's, you know, already. Um, not so much on the chat, but we've, we've got quite a few people watching things. So access to the chat uh, facilities. So, um, but yep, I think everyone's still still with us. Okay, well, if they're still with us, they're making progress. And um, I assume that they, they probably probably all of this is is fairly straightforward for for them to do. I think it's important to kind of talk about the. Um, the kind of concepts that underpin this and um, hopefully that'll help you to understand uh, what it is that you're doing when you're making a scratch game and then I'd love to see some examples of what you guys are building at home you know just to get an idea of uh, of really what your what your level is there's a few different th things of code um to do certainly if they you follow the key presses and you've got those four items you'll have noticed what I did there um, was to actually use the duplicate. If you right click on any of your blocks, you can duplicate it. Which duplicate is a fancy word for copy. So we can duplicate the code um, and that can speed things up a little bit. But um, yeah, I think it's really hard to gauge this, but yeah. I think I'm going to move on. Do you think that's okay, Julie? I was just going to see if. Because when we um, you did the negative ten, like, like the dinosaurs walking backwards, you can change the costume, can you? So change them around. Yes, so, absolutely. So, um, that that's a really good point, different. actually. Yeah, I'm gonna just switch over to that so you guys can see uh, what we're talking about here. So you can see when we're moving left and right, Jerry doesn't actually look where he's going. He's just going backwards. Uh, and so is the rooster as well. It's not it's not actually changing. And that's all within this direction, um, really. Uh, well, it's not all within the direction, but the direction plays an important part. So the direction at the moment is pointing 90 degrees, which you can see the arrow is pointing forward. If we were to kind of rotate this, you'd see I, I'm able to kind of point him if he's, he does a flip uh, or something like that. But I'm going to keep him at 90 degrees. I'm going to switch him to this um, left-right mode, and that kind of locks in uh, that so he, he can't be upside down. In, in this game, I don't really want him to be end up upside down. That might look a little bit silly. He, so he can just kind of be um, mirror images of each other. And what you can do then is you can actually change the uh, the look uh, when you press the left arrow. Um, and, but you'd also have to change the look back when you press the right arrow. That's maybe something for the slightly more advanced for you that, that want to do mm -hmm. that. I'm just going to carry on with um, 
what I wanted to do here. Uh, so we're back into show mode. So hopefully you guys all have that um, up and done. Uh, so your rooster, your item that you're going to be moving around is moving randomly. Your dinosaur is moving around based on key presses. I'm going to, much to the annoyance probably of your parents, guardians, teachers, I am going to introduce sounds into the equation. So uh, we haven't had a chance to play with sounds. I want Jerry to make a noise every time he catches the rooster. Obviously, Jerry's a vegetarian. He's not going to eat the rooster. They're just friends. They're playing a the game of, uh, of, of take, basically. Um, so I'm going to go to sound here. And uh, this, so I'm still on the uh, Jerry sprite. And I want to make a sound when uh, he's touching. So first of all, I'm going to choose what sound he's going to make. We kind of we've got this uh, pop sound by default. Um, if I can, yeah, you, I don't. Can you guys hear that? Uh, it just makes this pop noise. Um, yeah, can hear it. A yeah, bit. yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you when you do it on your own, um, your own, your own. Uh, computer you'll be able to hear it a little bit better and um, there are other sounds that you can get so you go here and um, from the code tab you go to the sounds and you can actually choose a sound in the same way uh, you can choose a costume um i wonder what i was looking for a roar but i don't think we have a roar do we no a croak you can make a croak noise uh, i don't know how how good would that be uh, I've got what other noises? Got an alien noise here. Alien creep one. Was... That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just gonna pick something. Um, I'm maybe gonna go for a clang, a classic clang. I'm gonna remove the pop and we'll go for a clang. Yeah. So you can imagine Rob the Rooster is wearing some kind of bell and uh, Jerry's going to tap it every time um, that they bump into each other. So uh, let's play the sound clang until done. So that worked when I click on it. But what we wanted to do, what, what the objective here is to get to play the sound when Jerry's touching the rooster. So is there anything that we can do with that? What, what does that look like? Um, so we need an event to kind of uh, hook into, and the event that we're going to do is when the when the game starts. Um, when the game starts, play the sound clang. That's going to work, but it's not based. You can see there, it's not based on touching the rooster. What I do is I'm going to use a brand new block here called the sensing block, and I've got on the top here. I've got this sensing touching mouse pointer but if you click this down arrow we can actually have the option for other sprites and things that are in, in our in our game so if you have more items you would see a longer list but actually you can say here rooster so i've got this i can actually jerry can sense when he's touching the rooster which is a really useful uh, tool and the rooster is moving around so i'm just going to stop him so we've got these elements here we've got our sound element here We've got when we want it to happen, we want it to happen when the game is playing. And now we have the condition. We have the condition when he's touching the rooster. We have all the elements, but we need to kind of put them all together um, to make them to work. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to go back to our loops. And similar to what we did in the rooster, which is kind of forever um, going randomly, I, I don't want him to... Um, I do want him to do it forever, but I wanted to do it only when he touches the rooster. So I can use this if then. And I, I mean, I can't describe to you how important the if loop is in programming. Um, if you do programming to any level uh, in high school or for your job, and Julie, um, I should have mentioned right at the start, mm -hmm. actually does this professionally. As you can tell, I'm a complete amateur you know julie does this um you know coding day in and day out uh, and i mean do you want to sit tell everyone how many times on an average day do you use like an if loop or you have to look at an if loop or how you know they're fundamental yeah. to, to programming really if it loops loops in general yeah um just all the time so. yeah 
they're, they're a really powerful tool. And so we can say, if touching rooster, then play sound. So now we've got all of our elements into a single block. Um, that looks right to me. Uh, does that look good to you, uh, Julie? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Look, well, look, let's try it then. We'll play. Oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? Now, th this is a, a little bit, you notice it worked there at the end because I touched the um, the flag at the same time. You see what happens here when I press the flag, you see that it flashes up the code. Just to... Yeah, well, um, take, take, if you can't hear the sound, take my word for it. Um, when I click this, it doesn't actually work it, or it only works for that split second when the flag's clicked. I want him to be checking all the time if he's touching the rooster. So I need to put my if loop inside a forever loop. So he's forever looking for the the, the uh, rooster. And now that's gonna work a, a little bit better. And you can hear that, you know, my clang. I'm sure you guys are coming up with much better noises. But, uh, but I'm quite happy with that. Um, I want you guys to, to follow along. I am going to switch back over so you won't be able to see this code. I'm going to switch back to the task to the, I'm going to stop that because he's clanging away in my eardrum. Um, but I'm going to switch back over to the um, to the screen so that you have a chance to do that. You you may have already started. I'm leaving it on there just for a second to give you guys an idea of what you need to do. Uh, but I'd really like you to try uh, and do that yourself uh, starting now. Okay, well, I mean, we're into our last 15 minutes, Julie. I've still got a couple more uh, tasks to go, but I think I think we're doing okay time-wise. Yeah, interesting pass, so it's good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I could maybe ask Daryl. Are, are you going to cut it off, Daryl, when it comes to, to three o'clock, you know? Um, are the hamsters needed? Are they unionized, the hamsters? Do they, do they get official union breaks? <laughs> Uh, so just you guys uh, well not I'm not trying to distract you guys while you're doing your code um but it's it's really important that you give this a go mm -hmm. that you try and understand what's happening there you've got a loop inside a loop you're checking for a condition and you're playing a sound based on the condition it's really I mean it's it's it's, it's fundamental to coding you guys are doing a lot in a very short space of time, if you've never done programming before, some of this may not be sticking and that's okay. You know, we will go over these concepts again and again, you will get practice in, in using them. And before you know it, um, it does become second nature. Um, but I'm sure everyone, everyone at home is probably just flying, Julie, aren't they? They're probably just, uh, they're wondering what I'm making all the fuss about probably. You just uh, one note that grid, the coordinate grid that you showed right at the start. Yeah. Um, just to make everyone aware that <clears throat> that is actually a um, scratch sprite. So if you go into the sprites, I think it's <clears throat> bottom, um, you can actually pull that sprite in. And that's really useful, actually. Useful um, helps you. Can, you can use that sprite. Use it. No, that, that, that's a fantastic tip. Um, I didn't even know that myself. Is it, what's it called? I think it's right at the bottom. Um, I thought it was right at the bottom. Well, possibly, um, uh, is it possible it's been added as a sprite possibly to a game that you've made before? I, I'm not seeing it there on the default, but it, it, you, it's definitely oh, available. Yeah. As, it, it's available as a picture, and you guys could download it and add it mm -hmm. as a sprite and then put it on, on the screen. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good tip. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to kind of combine task um, four and five um, because I'm keen to kind of get to the uh, code studio and I realize I've wasted a lot of time uh, making jokes today. So the two things, I, so everyone hopefully has got that bit of code. I've just put that bit of code back up there uh, if you need to finish it off, uh, but I'm going to move on now. And I'm actually, I'm going to introduce a whole nother concept. If you guys haven't had your minds blown enough with if loops, forever loops, touching, sounds, we've got it all going on today. I'm going to introduce something 
also new, which is variables. Uh, I've mentioned them previously, um, but variables are another fundamental part of coding. The way I like to think about them, and by my, my, my mind, is by no means uh, normal. So uh, you may have a completely different way of thinking about it that probably would be even better. But the way I think about it, it's like, it's like a box. It's like a container. A variable is somewhere that we can store something. And we can store it, we can kind of make it secure so it can't be changed, but quite often variables are most useful when we can just update the value inside based on things that happen. So it's like somewhere where we can store that information quite safely inside a, a box. So that's the way I like to think about it. Uh, so I'm going to make a new variable. And the variable I'm going to make is I'm going to call score. So no prizes for guessing uh, what this variable is going to do. And I'm going to make it available for all sprites, the score. Yeah. I uh, click OK. So I've made this new variable and it's now appeared in my variables uh, block palette. And what I can do now is I can actually uh, drag that into the code area and I can manipulate it. But you also notice in the uh, screen here, we have the score. I've not done anything with it. I've just created it and already um, it's appearing in the window. I want it to appear in the window. You may not want it to appear in the uh, window, and then you can use these show or hide uh, variables uh, based on um, based on your preference. I'm going to actually add in a backdrop now as well. And um, the reason I'm going to add in a backdrop is you have to assign your code to something, and in Scratch, I think it's better to assign kind of game wide code to a non-playing object. So effectively, so you don't want Jerry uh, possibly. It's oh, it's a background. The oh, X -Y yeah. 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 No, yeah, no, well, yeah, no, brilliant. So you're absolutely right. So it's actually a backdrop, <laughs> not a sprite. Yeah, but yeah, and there, there, there's well, two yeah. of them there. There's uh, the, the kind of graph paper as well, but no, brilliant. I, I had no idea that yeah. they were there. Um, you know what? I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep this backdrop because I think mm -hmm. that's that's really useful for me. But obviously, you guys at home can use something a little bit more exciting. But I think just to kind of illustrate our point, this is this is a really good uh, backdrop to use. So I've changed the backdrop, and I'm actually um, going to do some code uh, on the. Uh, can I? I thought I could do some code on the backdrop, but I'm maybe thinking of a previous version of Scratch now. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna give some code to Jerry. Okay, Jerry's gonna get the code. So if he's touching the rooster, then what do I want to happen? Well, it depends on your game. In my game, Jerry and Rob are playing a game of Tig, and I'm gonna give Jerry a point every time he catches Rob. But in your game, maybe you've chosen an item like a a uh, balloon or something like that that is going to burst and maybe you're going to get negative points you know what i mean so maybe it's something that the, your player should avoid so whether you're trying to catch your player and get points or avoid them and avoid getting negative points it, it, it's really a gameplay decision but in my game if he touches the rooster if he touches rob i'm actually going to um play the same clang and i'm going to change my variable by one this is a really useful block. I've just dragged it straight out of this uh, block palette, changed my variable by one. Uh, I'm going to cl click on the. It's the stage to add code. Thank you, Daryl. Um, I don't know if you hear Daryl's voice. He's just like the voice of uh, Zeus coming in there um, with, with, it, with the tips. Um, but the variable I want to change is score. I'm just going to stick with Jerry just now because I'm kind of committed. So I'm just going to carry on. Um, change score by one. And let's have a look at that. Play. I'm going to go after my rooster and see if I can catch him. Oh. That's, oh, there you go. It's, it's taking a wee while to react for some reason, but it is working. I'm not sure what the delay is there in the score that you see there. Ah, a new high score. I managed to almost get into uh, double figures. So um, stage, if I select the stage, here we go. And I want to add some code to it. OK, so the code I want to add to my stage is on events when the flag is clicked 
I want to reset my level. And this is something that you'll quite often do. And that's the reason I was looking for the stage to add code to, because this is quite a neutral place where we can add code that kind of sets up our game or closes off our game and um, that's not assigned to a particular sprite. So I'm selecting the stage here. When the uh, game is clicked, I want to reset the variable uh, back to zero. So I set the score variable to zero. So that means that every time I start the game, I start at zero, and then it counts up uh, based on um, based on how many times I managed to catch them. See, it goes to zero, and I caught them once, and uh, oh, I'm chasing them. There you go. Okay, great. That's working. Um, and you can see there, uh, if I go back to my stage, I'm just going to click this, and it resets the score back to zero. So in this one, um, there's a couple of bits of code that I need you guys to do, which is to add in the score variable, change the score by one when it touches the rooster, and then also on the stage you're resetting um, your, your score back to, to zero. So I'm going to switch back to my presentation. I'm going to put up a slide. Um, and the, there's two tasks, make a score variable, add, add a back, backdrop, but I'm just combining them both. So I'm, uh, add a backdrop, it's nice and straightforward. So I'm just going to leave the make a score uh, variable uh, up there for a minute. And we're down to our last five minutes, Julie. I can't believe where's the time gone today? I know, yeah. Race past today. <laughs> yeah. There's only that one more time. Oh. Mm. Remember to share your uh, creation if you have a go on the Code Inverness Studio, Julie. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, it's possible. I, I kind of gave you a lot of information in that last one. I'm just going to, I'm actually, I'm going to show you the code um, so that you guys can, can see this at home. This is really important that um, that your main sprite character has all of these different elements of code. And let's walk through it together. So we have the key presses here. When the up arrow key is pressed, we change Y by 10, which means we go up. Down arrow, negative 10, we go down. Left arrow, we go negative 10 steps, which is left. Right arrow, we move 10 steps, which is right. But this is maybe the most confusing bit of code. Um, and there's a lot to kind of break down here. I'm just going to pull it apart a little bit so that we can kind of see the different elements. So this is how we're, this is the event that our code is going to activate on. So we want the code to start whenever we click the green flag. And we want this to happen as long as the game's playing, effectively forever. Forever is a bit of a misnomer, but it's easier to, to write down forever than as long as the game is being played. Uh, but effectively, they're the same thing. And within this loop, we're putting a loop inside a loop, a little bit like Inception. You guys are probably, you guys will be too young to know the movie Inception where you have a dream inside a dream, but we're having loops inside loops and this does get very confusing. But by putting this loop inside the forever loop, it means that we're forever checking because if we just had the one if loop, it would only activate once and it would be over. Um, but by putting the forever loop above it, or putting the if loop inside the forever, it means that we're forever checking. And this, this is an, another brand new thing that we've introduced today, which is this touching or sensing uh, element. Uh, and this effectively knows when your rooster uh, is at the same position uh, or overlaps your, your dinosaur. So we can actually check, check for this condition. And if this condition is true, if we are touching our rooster, then we execute whatever code is in here. And we could, we could actually change the, you could change whatever this is inside to be, uh, we could make them bigger, we could think, we, we could do um, whatever we want. You can see that there, um, he, he, he grows massive. It doesn't really matter um, what the code is inside. The, the point is that the code executes only when we touch the rooster. And I'm gonna make Jerry back to 100 quickly. Um, but the, what we want to do in our example is we want to, when we touch the rooster, we want to play a noise and we want to change our score by one. Uh, yeah. So 
we haven't got time to the last challenge. The last challenge was to um, make the costumes change when you press the, the key the key presses in order to make him look like he's going forward and backwards. I'm just going to leave that. I'm not actually going to do that. We'll have to come back to that in a future week where I can talk about it in more detail. If you guys know how to do it, then please do it. Uh, if you've only got to the point where you play the sound when he touches the the, the item uh, or when they touch whatever your character does, then, then that's absolutely fine. If you've got to the point where you're able to add in variables, then fantastic, well done. And remember, your stage should be used to reset it. I'm just going to quickly, I realize we're out of time, but I'm just going to quickly uh, move over just, just to... Just another thing, Rob, just to mention, yeah. just uh, which might be useful, the X and Y coordinates, um, it refers in Scratch, it refers to the center of the sprite. Um, that's what confused me yeah. a bit in the past. But it's the center of the sprite. So just the, cent the, cent the center of the stage is X and y value. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that, Julie. I just want, before we finish, I, I want to show you guys a couple of things on the studio. Um, if I can go to my studios. Uh, thank you everyone who shared their, their games with us from, from last week. I really like Bob and George. I'm assuming that Bob's the bear and George is the dragon and it follows along. I see there's, there's actually some new, um, there's some new ones here as well. This uh, Utaru, Utaru um, this one's really nice actually. Actually, um, the cats speak whenever, uh, whenever they move in a, in a certain direction. And uh, Fortro 7 actually added in a flip movement to his as well. Um, so this is all really cool. But I've added a game here called Jerry's Lost Ball. You'll see it in the description of today's uh, lesson. It's a game I've made where you guys can actually practice finding Jerry's football. And when you find it, it pops up, and you press the space key, and Jerry says something, and he's lost it again. And then you've got to find it based on the coordinates up here. Uh, X125. Minus 55, somewhere about there. There you go. I found it. Press space. Oh no, lost again. He starts crying. So the description to that is in the link, um, or the link to that is in the description even. Um, please, you can use that to practice uh, finding your, your coordinates. Thanks a lot for your work today. Um, your, your challenge is to, change, to try and create that game. I'm going to put up a version of that game probably later today. Uh, that you guys can see how I've made it. I'd love to see how you guys have made it. Remember, if you do want to share it, share it to our studio and we can all uh, get to look at it. So that's that's everything for me. Have you got, what's that, sorry? So the name of the studio, uh, what is the name of the studio? That's a really good question. Uh, it's Code Inverness Studio. And um, hopefully maybe Daryl can put a link to that studio in the description as well so people can find it. Um, but we'd love to see more of your work um, being put up here and we will we'll, we'll give you feedback. If you have any questions, I appreciate, we've done a lot uh, today, uh, really. We've, we've, done, we've done a massive amount. Uh, if, I, if I look inside this, we've actually done motion, we've done loops, we've done sounds, we've done events, control, sensing and variables. We've, Basically, in the first two weeks, we've covered every type of block. Um, so, Julia, do you want to say anything before we sign off? Got a comment come in uh, from Fraser. He's saying, "Can can he add other games that he's made uh, to the studio?" So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it'd be great. It'd be I great mean, Fraser. Yeah, no, please. Uh, if you guys have done stuff before, uh, please post it. If you've got any questions. Mm -hmm. Yep, and Daryl's added it to the description, the, the link that you need to go to. It's not limited to uh, following along on the live stream. We're, we're happy to kind of look at anything you've done. If you've done something that's super cool, uh, we'd love to see it. Uh, just a reminder, we will be back next Wednesday. I'm just going to skip to the end here. <laughs> uh, we will be back next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. There is an advanced scratch lesson if you found this a bit too easy, uh, on Saturday at two o'clock. Um, but thank you very much for watching today and goodbye. Okay, bye everyone. See you next week. <laughs>